Excited Podcast. I'm your host, Kat Klaus. And on today's episode, we're going to do something a little bit different. Um, We don't have an interview today. I thought that since there's a lot of our listeners who are high school students or transfer students who are looking at colleges this summer to apply this fall, that this would be a great opportunity to share with you Uh, the top seven things that I would say you should look for in a college if you are undecided. Now, before I get into each one of these tips, I want to say that there are a lot of people out there that will say, if you're undecided on a major, you should just go to, you know, junior college or community college and figure that out before you spend a whole bunch of money on university. And While that may be the best path for some students, it's not the best path for all students, and I'll tell you why. I was a transfer student, as you might remember from our first episode, and when I had started at community college, I had graduated high school a year early, and part of the agreement was that I go to community college for two years, and my parents and the principal were right. I wasn't really ready for university. I wasn't mature enough yet, although I thought very differently. And when I got there, I found that even though it was a very supportive environment, I was a little bit more on my own than I anticipated, which meant that even though I thought that I was going to be a veterinarian and I had a very defined path, I really had to fight my way through that path. I read the student handbook. I went through the course catalogs. I planned out all of my coursework. I had contingency schedule plans and things like that. And the reason I was able to do that so well and get out of community college in two years, I was able to get my AA and graduate and then transfer to university, was because I had a defined path. I knew what classes I needed to get to be finished. I knew what major I was applying to at university, so it was easy to transfer. And I had to be very on top of things. I had to research things. I had to ask four or five different departments for what I needed. And if you're not that type of student, if you don't have that type of personality, and even then I was a little bit shy, it's really hard to find your path in junior college or community college if you're not on top of things like that. And so for a lot of students, the support system you can get at a university really helps because they're looking out for you. Your professors are asking you those questions about what you like and don't like and the skill sets and things like that, especially at smaller, more um, tight-knit colleges and universities. And if you remember from the last episode, I talked a little bit about the benefits of a liberal arts college. And we'll talk about that in a moment as well. And so while a lot of people say, don't spend your money going to university first, you know, go to junior college first and really figure out what you want, you need to be really strategic about that. You really need to take some of your general ed classes that are going to lend themselves for you discovering the skills you're best at. And you're going to have to spend a lot of time in that two years job shadowing and getting some experience to figure out what that path is. And even then you might spend a little bit more time, which is perfectly okay, finding your major and then transferring. So as we start this episode, I wanted to address that because I've heard that a lot. It's what a lot of adults tell students, you know, just go Um, you know, stay here, figure it out, and then go. And while that is great for some students, it's not perfect for others. Um, With my little brother, my little brother was not the A-type personality. He is now, but at that point, you know, when he was 18, he was not. And I knew that with his personality and the fact that he was kind of leaning towards law, but wasn't quite sure If he had gone to the same college I had for the first two years, he would have wandered around a lot and then he might have not finished. And so I, my brother was my first client officially. I told my parents that he needed to go to four year and my brother did amazing at four year and really matured and came into his own and figured out who he was and he was highly successful. And so as we're going through this, in the back of your mind, you might be thinking, oh, I'm, I'm just going to go to community college and try to figure it out. 
Um, in the next episode, I want to give you some tips if that is your path to actually, you know, keep an eye out for what you should be doing during those two years. But that's next episode. So let's talk a little bit about what to look for in a college if you're undecided. First and foremost, one of the best things that you can do when you're looking is to look for colleges that have extensive programs for undecided majors. These do exist. In fact, uh, there are colleges out there that do better for undecided majors. They have special programs for you. They get you a specialized advisor. They have you do, you know, kind of a, an interdisciplinary or an entry um, first year seminar career plan or career planning class. And so really look at the opportunities or don't be afraid to ask admissions about the opportunities for undecided majors. And when you when you're searching on the website, you know, don't be afraid to search for, you know, undecided, undeclared and see what they have to offer. And if you don't see a whole bunch on the website, what I want you to do is I want you to contact the admissions office. Don't be scared. The admissions office is there to help and ask them what resources they have available for students who are undecided and how are they going to support you in finding that perfect path for you. A lot of colleges do really good work in this area. I know that uh, here in California, Cal Lutheran University has a very robust and good program for undecided students where they really get into the nitty gritty um, with career assessments and things of that nature. And they don't pressure you to declare until late sophomore year of college. And so you have a lot of time to explore and they're encouraging that exploration. Along those lines in, in encouraging that exploration, my second tip is to choose a college that has general education requirements that span a whole bunch of choices. Especially, you might want to look for schools, smaller schools, that will offer more support in deciding your path. You know, that means that the whole school's behind you. You have career resources, you have advisors, but also your general education requirements, which are the classes that you need to take to graduate, span a wide variety of different subjects and majors and topics. And so as you are completing your general ed requirement, you have the opportunity to explore in different fields. And as I said last episode, liberal, liberal arts schools are a great start for this because they encourage that interdisciplinary work and they teach skills that span across a curriculum. In their general edu education requirements, they are also choosing from all departments. So you may have a general ed theme requirement of historical society or something like that. And you'll be able to choose from the sociology department or the psychology department, or the history department, or the philosophy department. And so you get a really broad view of a, a lot of different departments that way. So choose a school that has a lot or a broad offering of general education requirements. So as you are going to school and you are completing the classes you need for, to graduate, you can also be exploring different majors. The third tip, and this is really important, you need to be able to change majors easily at your school. Here in California at California Polytechnical University in San Luis, also known as Cal Poly Slow, it is more difficult to change your major. So as you are going into Cal Poly Slow, you really need to have a good idea of what you are hoping to accomplish over your four years. And it is rather difficult. It's not impossible, but it's rather difficult to switch your major. So if you are undeclared or undecided, Cal Poly Slow is probably not the best school for you because it's going to be very difficult for you to change majors or to change into a program. So you want to look for that flexibility. If you're not sure about that flexibility, don't be afraid to ask admissions. How hard is it to change my major? What's the process involved? For most universities, it's a, it's a matter of paperwork, but you want to be aware ahead of time as you're choosing schools that you can move around a little bit if you change your mind. On that same line, my fourth tip is to look for colleges that encourage double majors or minors. And you might be thinking to yourself, Kat, I don't even know what my main major is, let alone a double major or a minor. But here's why I want you to look for this. As you're going through this process, you might find yourself torn between two different areas. And if that's the case, 
why not both, right? I had started out as a biology major with a pre-vet emphasis. Two years in, I switched to communications, but I'd also really enjoyed my ancient studies classes and classics classes. And so when I got to Santa Clara, I declared a double major in classics, if for only because I loved all of those classes and that's what I wanted to study as well. Santa Clara Liberal Arts School embraced that. They wanted me to double major. They wanted me to explore across the curriculum. I think that I had told you in the last episode that I had done a film on a modern adaptation of a Greek tragedy. And that was amazing. And I was able to write that script in one of my communications classes. And so I got to blend a little bit. There's another great opportunity in a minor where you might think that a double major is way too many classes and now I have to spend an extra year in school, but you could minor in something that's going to give you more skills or that will help balance that in between. Minors that I highly encourage, uh, undecided majors, or even I encourage this with pre-med students and engineering students, a business minor is always a good idea. And the reason being is that any field you're going into, it doesn't matter what it is in this world, is business related. And so if you can learn more about marketing and managing and branding and finance, that's going to help you regardless of what field that you're going into. It also makes you very marketable as a candidate for future jobs. So a business minor or a communications minor where you're learning more about writing, communicating, broadcasting, marketing, branding, et cetera, is also a good idea. So look into schools that will encourage that. So you don't have to find one definitive thing, but you can explore a little bit more. They're flexible. My fifth tip is you want to look for schools that have a robust career center. And what I mean by robust career center are schools that have career assessments in their career center. They have a lot of career advisors. They're putting on things like um, major fairs where you can explore majors on campus through the career center. It might be they have a whole bunch of internship uh, opportunities for you and they're helping match you to those opportunities. There's a lot of career counselors on campus that will develop that one-on-one -on -one relationship with you to help you explore, to help you find what your path is. And there are varying degrees of career centers across the board at colleges across the country, but you really want to look into the career center and see what are they offering? What kind of services do they offer? What events are going on there? Because that's going to really help you in your search. Now, I wanted to bring up a, a college um, that does this actually really well. And um, that is the University of Central Missouri. And what they do is if you are an open option major, which means that you're undecided, they actually have individualized career counseling for you where you get your own career counselor. They take you through assessments. They help you explore and transition to developing that awareness about what you're good at and what you want to do. They have a really good program where they help you explore majors and minors. They do a lot of hands-on and everybody is eligible, which is great. They have a really robust career counseling center. They have four career counselors there on campus to help you. And they're offering all these different programs and hands-on opportunities and internship opportunities. And they're there to help you figure out what you want to do, which is amazing. There's not a lot of schools that take that level of detail. So um, I'll put this in the show notes, but I want you to check out the University of Central Missouri and what they offer to undecided students because it's pretty innovative and amazing. Their whole foundation is built on helping you not only discover what major you want to be in, but how that translates to a career and your skills and goals. And so they're not just trying to get you out the door. They're really trying to teach you. So look for programs like that. That will really help you. And then with other career programs, a lot of times they'll have assessments, career assessments that you can take for free that's included. You have career counseling um, included in your tuition and things like that. So um, you really want a robust career center. The sixth tip is that if you're leaning toward a direction one way or the other, 
Look for a school that has exploratory programs or themes that allows you to take coursework in your major right away so you can start making decisions. Um, this might be something from an exploratory theme of a couple different departments pulled together, or this might be um, um, along the lines of the engineering technology major has you start with engineering technology classes from the first semester. This is great for undecided majors because immediately you are working in that major and you can decide, is this right for me? It's not right for some, for a lot of, not I want to say a lot of students, but it's, it's not right for some students because it tends to create anxiety that you tried something and you didn't like it and now you have to pick something else. I don't want you to think it, of it that way. I want you to think of it as exploring. Along these lines, there's an amazing program. I'm gonna, I'm gonna shout out to another school. University of Wisconsin-Milwaukee has a pathway. They're called meta majors for undecided students. And what they are, are like I said, these themes in these different areas where you can explore multiple majors in an area. So examples are they have an arts design and innovation meta major, they have business and industry and applied technology made a major, engineering and natural science made a major, humanities and communication, health, social and behavioral sciences. And so you don't have to decide I'm going to be a biology major right now. You could actually, you know, look into the engineering and natural sciences made a major and see if that's a good pathway for you or health. And so you have a lot more options that way and you don't feel as locked down and you can explore in a wide field. And so that is an amazing program. So look for like meta, meta majors or theme majors and things of that nature at a school because that might also help you figure out what you want to do. The last tip that I have for you are choose schools that offer hands-on experiences in a field so you can get a sense for what you like and don't like. And this could be anything from shadowing, community service, project-based learning, especially for sciences and design, or intern, you know, something that requires an internship in the field or a summer research program or something like that, so that you can go into that field. And I would say this is important for people who even think that they know what their major is. Look for experiences in that field so you can get your hands dirty and see if it's what you thought it was. If I would have done this the year before I applied for colleges in high school, as I've told you many times, I pr probably would not have gone the first two years of college on a veterinary path because I would have learned very early on that, that was not the right path for me. So I highly encourage you to look for schools that offer those hands-on experiences because those will make a big difference in discovering what you want and what you don't want as you're looking for your major. Those are a few tips. I mentioned a few programs. I'm going to link a few more example programs here in the show notes for you to look at. As you know, here at Majorly Undecided, we are connected to March Consulting, which is an educational consulting company that I started about 10 years ago. And at March Consulting, we have a lot of online courses, one of which is our college list builder that teaches you how to figure out, you know, what colleges are right for you and that fit. So I highly encourage you to visit that. We'll put that in the show notes as well. If you're feeling a little bit lost in choosing colleges and how to research and how to figure out what's right for you. If you're an undecided major, which you probably are because you're listening to this podcast, use these tips in your research. I promise you it will make a huge difference and decide what's right for you. Maybe, you know, having flexibility in a double major is not as important as you having that support from the career center or that you have a program, an extensive program for you as an undecided major. And so don't be afraid to explore and don't be afraid to ask admissions. They are there to help you. Your admissions counselor will do everything that they can to help you learn more about that school. Now, as I say that, I want to say, make sure you do your homework on the website first and then write down a list of questions before you contact admissions on what you couldn't find on the website or what you want more information on. If you have a question or topic you'd like to see featured on the podcast, don't hesitate to email us at info at majorlyundecided.com. You can also follow us on Facebook with our Facebook and Instagram page, Majorly Undecided. And as always, you can find more resources, including our free quick guide to deciding your major on our new and improved website, majorlyundecided.com. 
Thank you, and we'll see you on the next episode.